Saudi Arab has issued new restrictions for Ramadan and Iftar, restrictions that have angered many people from the particular community. A vast population of Muslims from all over the world, except Saudi Arabs, are very annoyed and furious over the restrictions. As fellow Indians, do you wonder what might be the restrictions be? And does India have the guts to implement those restrictions too? So let's find out how Saudi Arab is reforming the religion, and can India be a part of it too, for good? The Islamic Ministry of Saudi Arab have issued a set of regulations and restrictions for observing the holy month of Ramadan. These guidelines include ban on donations for mosques, prohibition of after sunset iftar meals on mosques, prayers are required to be kept brief, children are not allowed to pray in mosques, worshippers must bring their identification document. Apart from the main mosques in Mecca and Medina, volume levels must be kept low and prayers cannot be broadcasted. There are also other rules such as no financial donations should be collected for projects to feed people who are fasting, and if food is provided for people who are fasting, it should be done in the designated areas and cleaned up afterwards. There are many like this, but these are some of the major guidelines out of which regulations on the ban of loudspeakers, restrictions on prayer telecast, and ban on entry of children are mainly opposed. According to critics, these are done by the Crown Prince of Saudi Arab, Mohammed bin Salman, to reduce the influence of Islam in public life, whereas he asserted that the prohibition on recording and airing of prayers was put in place to protect platforms from exploitations. Like always, everyone has their own opinions on the matter. Ahead of Ramzan, Saudi Arabia is facing backlash from Muslims worldwide. Bin Salman has issued a new set of orders and rules that have been published on the Ministry of Islamic Affairs website designed to tone down and restrict Ramadan in Saudi Arabia as he continues with his push to drive Islam out. Of the steps are good or evil is subjective, but it requires guts to take such steps. Saudi Arab over the past few years have taken many such steps, which we will be discussing today. But wait, what about India? What is the situation of these types of rules in India? Well, India had to have rules in this matter. But let me show you the situations. On 28 October 2005, Supreme Court ruled that loudspeakers can be permitted to be used till midnight only on festive occasions for maximum to 15 days per year. One can also post this video and read it yourself for good. In August 2016, Bombay High Court ruled that use of loudspeakers is not a fundamental right. On 26 June 2018, Uttarakhand High Court also set a 5 decibel limit for loudspeakers. However, on ground except Uttar Pradesh, other states do use loudspeakers, and that too with high volume. But this is not a situation in Saudi Arab. Rules are implemented strictly for everyone. Saudi Arab has banned the entry of children, whereas in India some citizens do namaz on roads and disturb fellow citizens. Uttar Pradesh police have banned such troubling affairs, but other states are not being able to acquire such courage. This is a major difference between the largest democracy and an Islamic republic. Saudi Arabia has reformed or revolutionized their religion in many ways from around 2015. Let's discuss them next. In terms of arts or to put it simply entertainment, be it dance, cinema or music, Everything is restricted in Islam, whereas Saudi Arab has launched the construction of entertainment hub in 2016. Saudi Arab has started organizing comedy shows, pro wrestling events, and monster truck events too. In 2017, the country hosted its first concert by a female performer in country's history. In 2019, BTS, a Korean pop band, also performed in Saudi Arab, despite criticism. And from 2022, the country is said to have 600% increase in music events. There are a few signs that things might be getting better. I read in the paper the other day that for the first time, Saudi Arabia had a fashion show. Saudi Arab have also introduced a new scheme, Premium Residency Visa. It will provide foreigners a permanent residence, along with the rights to conduct businesses, get into real estate, etc. Anyone who knows Islam will sense the intensity of these reforms. One must really accept Saudi Arabia has guts to take risks and even the largest democracy is unable to. 
Many things which were considered impossible in an Islamic Republic are being made possible there. Kiria, an upcoming entertainment city just like Las Vegas. Women permitted to watch football from stadiums. They abolished flogging as punishment. Women allowed to drive alone, get employed, even permitted to go out without burqa. These are normal things in India, but was considered impossible in an Islamic Republic. But the most unexpected, which anyone will consider revolutionary, that Muhammad bin Salman announced is to send some hadiths, which are considered evil in nature. Link. This represents the majority of hadith and this type of hadith is unreliable whatsoever, in the sense that its veracity is not established and that it isn't binding. And in the biography of the Prophet peace be upon him, when the hadith was first recorded the Prophet peace be upon him ordered those records to be burnt and forbade the writing of hadith, and that should apply even more so to habar hadiths, so that people are not obliged to implement them from a sharia perspective since they also might be used as ammunition to dispute God Almighty's power to produce teachings that are fit for every time and place. Hence, the government, where Sharia is concerned, has to implement Quran regulations and teachings in Mutawatar Hadiths, and to look into the veracity and reliability of Ahad Hadiths, and to disregard Habar Hadiths entirely, unless if a clear benefit is derived from it for humanity. In India, this video is enough for radical Islam to do what they think law is, Sartan Sejuda which they did in terms of Kanayalal, Umesh Kolhe, Munis Varadwas, Ankit Zha, Sanu Pande, etc. They were all murdered for supporting Nupur Sharma. But in Saudi Arabia, they have announced they will be doing it for sure. They have reformed their educational syllabus to such as they removed a section which supports capital punishment for homosexual relations, removed sections that considered jihad as the highest aspiration of Islam, Anti-Semitic references against the Jews are still present, but very less now. Class 10 textbooks have removed the passage that says, The last day of judgment will not come until Muslims fight the Jews, and the Muslims will kill them all. Some references are still present, such as, A Jewish boy being saved from hell by being converted to Islam, or a Quranic text that describes God sending a group of Jews into real monkeys. But still, with all this hatred against other religions, what Saudi Arabia is trying to do is worthy of compliments. But how are they having such big changes? And why are they revolutionary? To understand that, let's understand some basic history of Saudi Arabia. Muhammad ibn Abd al Wahhab, who was born in 1703, is considered to have removed impurities from the religion, and his ideology started getting a huge number of followers which later became Wahhabi Islam. This Wahhabi Islam later became kind of the official form of Islam in Saudi Arabia. In 1744, a pact was signed between Muhammad ibn Saud and Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab. Actually, the pact was signed between two families. The pact stated that the Saud family will control the state affairs and the Wahhab family will control the religious affairs. The agreement is still in use and both the emperor and the imam are from the same respective families. But in present days, the power of Imam is in decline. Since the state is stronger, it is able to enforce law properly. This is the main reason of how such reforms are being possible. And this is revolutionary too, as every Islamic Republic have Imams as the power center. In simple words, religion runs the country. But now in Saudi Arabia, the state will be having more influence and thus better law and order. In simple words, happy citizens. By the way, can such revolutionary reforms be enforced in India too? India, of course, is far ahead in terms of free society. But when it comes to a particular community, things are not that democratic. In criminal matters, Muslims are punished as equal in India. But when it comes to civil matters, they fall under All India Muslim Personal Law Board. In simple words, the Indian constitution in terms of civil matters will enforce what All India Muslim Personal Law Board states. Now what have All India Muslim Personal Law Board enforced? Fatwa Alamgiri. Yes, the very same Fatwa Alamgiri that Aurangzeb had enforced. All India Muslim Personal Law Board is a non-government body but enjoys enough power that, in Sahbano case, they along with other supporting groups was able to force the Rajiv Gandhi government to make law against the Supreme Court. In India, reforms are not possible because the government is involved in appeasement politics. Reforms are hard to enforce everywhere in the world. 
but strong governments like Saudi Arab can enforce such law, whereas in democracy like India, reforms are harder due to the never-ending processes and vote bank politics. It is the sad reality of India, the largest democracy, and you still wonder where are the CAA rules and regulations.